Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to Mirror Interpretation to the Robert page. My name is Joanna and I am an interpreter with Bulgarian, Italian, Dutch, Macedonian and English. And today I am creating, I have a pleasure to create this beautiful video with uh, professional with Jose. Today we're going to talk about cultural awareness and what is appropriate in Mr. Jose culture. Can you tell us where you're from, Jose? Uh, which country? And, and so just introduce yourself, please. Thank you very much, Joanna. Uh, my name is Jose. I'm from Costa Rica. And uh, Costa Rica is a Central American country uh, that is uh, located on uh, between um, what is the Central American belt and uh, uh, between Nicaragua and Panama. So I'm going to put the map here, guys, just so you know. I'm going to put where is located his country on a map right here after when I did this video. So, Jose, let's do this. I'm going to ask the questions, and I want you to tell us for Costa Rica and then in general for Latinos, because I know that there are differences there. Whatever uh, you have experienced or you feel like, uh, it's, it's all whatever you have encountered in your experience, uh, you think is appropriate or not appropriate. So the first question is timing. What is considered being on time in your country or being late or being early uh, for appointments? And I would like you to come in with friends and in professional business field, of course, starting first with Costa Rica and then in general for Latinos. Uh, for Costa Rica, basically, the time, the business time actually has to be respected because it's uh, frowned upon to be late. However, in Latin American culture, especially Costa Rican, uh, there's a phrase that we, we have that is called Tico time, which is a very relaxed uh, time frame. So, for example, it's a 30 hours, uh, 30 minutes, sorry, span between uh, one time setting and the other. So for example, if a professional meeting uh, will be held at 10 a.m., many people, uh, some of them will come at 10 a.m. However, some others will come even at 10.30. This is actually a pretty standard and normal in my country. And it's uh, the business settings has become uh, quite relaxed. Some businesses, however, like uh, transnational companies uh, do not uphold to this. And many people actually um, respect the um, European time frame, even the British time frame, very, very punctual. Punctuality right now is considered a must in most of a business setting. Uh, in regards to friend setting, actually, uh, we keep uh, Tico time and uh, Latin America uh, chilling time. So it's a huge difference. And is there any difference between males and females? For example, if a male is late, let's say he's the boss, is it considered kind of okay? Or if a female is late, is that seen more badly in professional field? I can tell that definitely happens in my culture. Can you share about? Actually on a friend setting, uh, is, uh, that's not so. Actually, it's, it's, it's the same for men and women. Exactly the same Tico time applies for all of them and uh -huh. for business setting of course uh, it is more expected uh, by men to be more punctual than women women are given a little bit of time frame you know to uh, uh, do their errands and things however uh, for males it's actually more um, rigorous um, business setting in order to have a specific time frame for uh, meetings oh because in my culture if it's a uh, appointment the woman must be late. It's kind of obligatory thing. It's like of, if you feel like you're beautiful or you're valuable, you got to make the guy to wait for you. You got to make them like suffer for you in a way, waiting for you. In business setting, if a woman is late, it's not okay. It's bad. It's very bad. Yes, in, in my culture is uh, basically the same um, for business settings uh, is a standard for actually males and females to uh, be specifically on time, depending on the settings of each company. However, in some more uh, relaxed atmosphere for different companies, some people have the flexibility of using Costa Rican time or Latin time, which is not like uh, as punctual as, you know, as required. 
Mm -hmm. What about dress code? Is there a specific things that are considered appropriate uh, or not appropriate? Um, talking about uh, skirts, uh, colors of a makeup, of a lipstick, uh, for example, beards, uh, sports shoes with professional top clothes, like a suit. Is that something you could see there? For example, in my country for males, you could see people from the lower register that actually some of them do very successful businesses. They wear a suit and then they will wear a jogging shoes with Adidas white socks below, which is gonna make everybody laugh or they would smile in these meetings and just kind of smile at these businessmen that are more like in an agricultural environment or in a producing some kind of a stock or something. Uh, do you, can you say something about that? for females and males, of course. Uh, uh, that's a very interesting question in regards to dress code um, at, at work. Costa Rican has adapted a lot from Nordic culture. So the uh, we care a lot for our appearance. And uh, in business formal settings, the standard dress code is very similar to the ones at the Nordic cultures. For example, Denmark, Sweden, uh, Finland is a very sober um, a dress or suit, and no, uh, no much um, um, uh, chilling colors. Actually, a very sober makeup as well uh, for women, and um, for um, specific um, friend setting. Actually, the clothing is totally informal. You know, actually, some companies as well, uh, when they require uh, uh, like jeans day or or some uh, event that they uh, will uh, reward their employees. So there's one day that they pick so that they would come like ca what we call casual clothing. Casual in this particular term is not formal. Casual means like an informal American clothing, not pajamas, but actually quite informal. Yeah, we don't have these uh, days uh, in other cultures. I never seen it in other countries to, to be able to do this but they're casual most of the time. But clearly in my country, if you go casual, you probably gonna get fired. And it's not, they're not gonna tell you that you're fired because you went casual in the office. But let's say you're a secretary of someone in a company and you don't wear this sexy pencil skirt on and you don't look professional, they gonna shame your boss for having you there basically. So when you have a certain positions in the office, you gotta stick to a certain uh, certain like dress code and you make sure you look appetizing, but not too sexy. Let's call it like this. You gotta look professional and you gotta show, be some, somehow seductive, but not act seductive. This is like basically what is expected from a person in this setting in Eastern Europe. As a matter of fact, in Costa Rican setting, as I told you, uh, the uh, dress code in regards to um, work setting is very similar to Nordic culture. So uh, at the time of uh, using a, um, a suit, actually men use a relaxed suit, but very formal, for example, blazer and a trouser like uh, for professional setting, not many people use ties or wear ties. Women actually are expected to use skirt and um, specific stockings for office, uh, very uh, formal, not uh, that uh, provocative. And uh, especially in institutions that have to do with banking, finance and uh, uh, government setting, the uh, suit is the norm, actually it's extremely formal. Uh huh. Let's let's talk a little bit about money and is it something that is okay to consider talking in business field and with friends? And here I'm gonna share that when I was working in negotiation as an interpreter in a trade fair, business to business international trade fair uh, in Milano, I noticed that during the trade fair. Well, I interpret for the negotiations, especially government to government, they never discuss anything related to money. Uh, I remember some of the businessmen, Americans, of course, they want to know the numbers and they try to ask during these meetings in a trade fair. And most of the managers refuse to give any answers regarding uh, money, regarding any uh, numbers there. And they address that to 
when the things move to the next level and they would do like offerings and stuff. So can you tell us, and also with friends, uh, for example, in my country is very normal. Uh, clearly when you talk about how much money you do or something like that, a lot of people tend to say a little bigger number to look more successful or to impress others, especially if it's in a smaller city. Um, share, share your experience here. Thank you. Uh, in regards to uh, money talk in my country, uh, actually it's a taboo topic. And actually on the, the time of the companies that hire people, we have a law in Costa Rica that companies are not able to disclose salary on job listings. That's a law that we have uh, because uh, money is a very taboo topic. And uh, unless the person is very close to one another, on an informal setting, they will talk about money and how much they earn. But generally, this type of uh, question is not addressed in my country uh, at the very beginning of a conversation or, or informal setting. So for example, unless you have a sometime acquainted with a person that, and you know this person well, they will talk about money issues and how do they feel regarding uh, in regards to payment or how they will feel in regards to um, how the company is treating them financially speaking uh, they uh, will address that in secret but not openly so money still in my country is um, a top a taboo topic and we don't have this uh, constraint let's say to flounder or to uh, showing off uh, how much money do we make. You can actually tell by the type of company a person work, works for how approximately this person is gonna be earning. So by the company they work for, you can tell the social status on a, in a very rough way. So, so let's say, I just wanna ask you a question because as you share this as experience, I, I put my, add online i don't remember where i put it for this that i needed someone to collaborate with me so for you it's very unusual that i displace the amount that i was willing to uh, it, how do you deal with that particularly for me well i'm not a surprise but uh, as if you, if it would be my first time you know uh dealing with uh, foreign contractors or companies I will be quite shocked. Uh, and you will think that it's a little bit crazy as well, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct at the beginning, yes. <laughs> so I wanna ask you another question here related to money because uh, when I said that the, the people that will disclose that they are more successful or something, uh, normally I, I was just wondering because you said it's such a taboo, a lot of ladies, uh, Latinos ladies are very, how to say PT, PT makers, they say they're in a hard situation. They ask, I had a friend that they asked him money for the private school for the children, some huge amounts. He sell his car to send money to this lady and so on. So, so they understand that with the foreigners, especially the lady, they can use this as a poverina, like I'm poor, poor me or something like that. Would you like to comment on that? Sure. Uh, unfortunately, there's a trend, a common trend right now on uh, Latin American countries. Costa Rica has not escaped from that, that uh, unfortunately, many women uh, adopt the role of what we call pobrecita or poor lady, and they take advantage of the situation, let's say the social perceived situations, and they cling to foreigners, unfortunately. And they think that all the foreigners are money machines. So uh, that has this is very common trend in certain uh, Latin American countries. But actually, I will believe that is a common trend right now almost in all Latin American countries. No, I could say also in my country, especially if people are uh, coming from not very educated background, you will always hear this thought, oh, yeah, uh, marry a foreigner and fix your life start living life like this is going to be this belief that if you marry an american guy or italian or german or french it doesn't matter important is that he's not bulgarian this means that your life will be like roses and and honey and champagne or something like that this belief that uh, but the same way i could see that some ladies do the same thing uh, with a uh, with the people from the higher society let's say in the same country uh, I have I have experience being seen like this golden chicken 
from people that doesn't work or you go to vacation and they think that you're some rich lady and they propose to marry you in two days because they think that they see you as an opportunity basically you are their Everest in a way <laughs> you know if they stay in this level and and they see you like for example living in America I, I could tell you a lot of guys from my country will marry me just because I live here. I'm so sorry to say that. But there is also this kind of uh, inside my own culture, I could see this uh, perception that if you live in a certain place, this means, oh, you're in America, this means you're rich. Or I went to Europe in a trip a uh, few years ago, and I will tell you, I would say 99% of the people that I told were my friends, they made me pay their bills because in their head, they were thinking that, um that i'm rich or something i don't know and i was broke after this trip of three months i put my rent on my credit card which is crazy to even say but i also was able to see like who really cares about me genuinely and who is there because they want a free lunch or something in costa rica do you rica, see the same thing yes in your culture in costa rica we have a consideration specifically uh, for women in that regard uh, because the standard um let's say the standard procedure with the culture is that um, men are expected to provide to be the provider for women in all areas for life so for example if a man invites a woman to to a dinner he it is a given that actually he's supposed to pay and uh Right now, however, there's um, the trend of feminism in my country. So certain uh, certain women actually don't like to be paid. For example, for the for um, for the dinner, or they they wish to split the bill in half. You know, out, out of consideration, or sometimes for even for money issues or the economic situation of the country, they actually are very pretty aware, pretty aware of that. However, the norm is that uh, the, uh, the man actually is expected to provide at all times for women. It's like an imposed uh, Latin American setting. So well, some women oh, take In my country, this is also normal. I will tell you most of Eastern European are uh, being a gentleman. And I will tell you not only like in, I'm talking, let's say in the university, me and my colleagues sits to have a coffee and we'll be three girls and we had a coffee each of us in the morning at 7 a.m. Uh, the guys will split the bill, but not because they are dating us or because they are sexually involved. It's simply because it's, it's a cultural thing. And it's kind of considered, uh, oh yeah, I'm successful. I can afford to do this. This is some kind of a bragging, you know, a little bit. Uh, but I also noticed talking about feminism, I don't think this is real feminism, of course, but in my country, uh, if somebody want to, specifically ladies that are not very educated, if they want to show that they're really successful and that they are powerful or like they're on the top of their game, uh, I see some of these women will want to offer to pay everybody's food or everybody's bill or something like that. And then they will be broke for months, but just like to create this illusionary success or show the others that oh yeah, you're down here and I am up there or something like that. Uh, and also I see it's something about control with insecure women. Because I think the matter of the fact is that uh, ladies, we ladies appreciate gentlemen, not because we gonna die without this dinner or, or lunch or whatever they can offer us because we have been eating before without this gentleman so far you know and our life will probably survive without that so what about the gold digging um this gold digger trends that go on do you feel like this is happening in your country you know because here yes, in america yes. i would share that a lot of these persons that i meet um they try to make ladies to pair their to pay for their food and they make you pay for their food uh, with this shaming or, oh, you gold digger or something like that? There's an interesting phenomenon that is happening in my country right now. Uh, many women are, are very well educated. They actually are being promoted to high um, uh, positions and, and companies and the like. However, the stereotype that they still use as a power tool is that uh, they use the gold digging method 
in order to show off that uh, some of them, unfortunately, will feel superior to men. So uh, specifically, they will brag, as, as the example you, uh, you put uh, about their status. However, they financially will be broke uh, for months inside. Uh, but just to show that they are empowered, let's so quote unquote, and, uh, basically, um, they uh, use this strategy you know, to gain status. In Costa Rica, the formal status is um, quite important in regards to company positions. So the pobrecita mixed with the, um, the power tool that they have of the men as provider, it's a platform for some women you know, to create this scenario. Oh, wow, this is very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Uh, you, you make thousand thoughts running to my head and I, I just get a little bit lost there. Let's talk about our next topic, which is alcohol and ordering alcohol during the day. Uh, how is that, how this setting happen in your country? Like, uh, is it okay to have a drink during the day? For example, here in America, I never been so shocked because in my country, if somebody have a drink for lunch, is considered to, to be alcoholic. And here in America, when I moved to Denver like six years ago, I was working in this um, saloon restaurant or like a bar. And when I see people drinking alcoholic drinks like mimosas at 10 a.m., I was like in shock. I was like, oh my goodness, what these people are doing. Uh, in my country, this is not something that you can really, really see early in the morning, except somebody is drinking all day and all night long, like seriously. And then ordering alcohol during a business meetings, how is that something okay? Is that something you do for celebration? Um, just share your experience here. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, Latin American culture and Costa Rica specifically, uh, it's actually embedded with alcoholic culture because uh, Latinos um, in, most, in most settings, I don't say all of them, and, and of course it has some exceptions to the rule, uh, Latinos in almost all settings associate alcohol with fiesta, with partying. So, uh, for example, in my country specifically, there it says uh, two laws that prohibit the selling of alcohol in all business meetings and all companies. So, uh, see if a, a company is promoting alcohol, it is actually banned and fined by the government. It's, it's actually forbidden by law. And of course, uh, uh, needless to say, on business meetings or things like that, if the meeting is extra official uh, in regards of business, for example, is in an in a outer setting, let's say in a restaurant or a, let's say a convention center, alcohol is served uh, as a given. However, is not the norm in regards to the company itself. The company has forbidden to uh, provide alcohol or that any employee would actually consume alcohol in the company. So actually Costa Rica is very strict in that matter. In regards to the social setting, uh, informal setting, of course, uh, Costa Ricans can drink alcohol at any time during the day. We have this um, uh, facilities called pulperias, which is actually a, a mini, mini market, like um, it's a copy of the uh, Middle Eastern mini market and uh, European mini market combined. And uh, people buy alcohol at all times uh, during the day. They can buy beers, they can buy wine, they can buy uh, rum or whichever alcoholic beverage they, they please. But of course, alcohol is uh, sold to uh, only to people with qualified majority of age, which is uh, above 18. Below 18 is actually absolutely forbidden. And if a person is actually uh, inducing a minor to consume alcohol, it's actually fine uh, and even uh, process to jail. In this, Can I ask uh, you a question here? So just talking about the alcohol and the cigarettes, I, I just will tell you that in my country, compare, for example, to America, uh, they, they have advertisement of alcohol and, and cigarettes in public places. Uh, you're going to see banners uh, you, on the TV. You're going to see this uh, all these seduction things. And also, if you go on the beach in Bulgaria, there would be, 
you can lie down on the beach. They can bring you a cocktail or whatever you want. There would be a bars on the water, on the sea that is party, party, party. So uh, is that something, or for example, people that go camping or going to hike in the mountain or something like that, they will carry with themselves whatever alcohol like wine or if they want a vodka or whatever they drink. Um, it's going to be kind of normal thing. Is for that... example, yes, that, that's true. For example, in, in uh, informal in informal setting, let's say with families, they go to the beach and of course each family go with his, with their Cerveza. own. Yeah, with their own beer, exactly, with the ice pack, whatever, six pack. And that's, that's a normal thing in certain families. Not all the families do that, of course, but on a public place with there's, where there are adults, actually it's, uh, it's permitted. And um, in regards to the promotion of the alcoholic beverages, uh, Costa Rica has a very strict law that even though it is permitted to promote alcoholic beverages, uh, people on the advertisement should not drink alcohol themselves, not even holding the bottle uh, or whatever product, alcoholic product they are going to be advertised. So oh. the same with cigarettes. Costa Rica actually has a very, very tough law right now has passed um, a couple of years ago, I believe, that uh, forbidden is forbidden to smoke in any public place. So uh, in uh, my country, it's forgive me that I interrupt you. In my country has been always open, not only, but when you go to a restaurant, inside the restaurant, you're going to sit and have a dinner and, and next to you, somebody will smoke and all the smoke will get to you. And while I was a student, I'm talking student in Bulgaria 17 years ago, but <laughs> it did happen there. I remember that they tried to put the, because we entered in European community in 2008, and they tried to put this law to separate, to have a smokers and a non-smokers room in the restaurant. And what happened, they will have the same room, they will put a small curtain in between, and all the smoke from the smokers <laughs> will go yes. to the non-smokers. Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about that yes I, actually, a difference to this i just want to add here that in my country in the advertisement you probably didn't have the marlboro guy that smoked the marlboro cigarettes no I, no actually we you did? Actually, actually we had it and actually this uh, advertisement was forbidden okay uh, it was banned it was because banned, in yeah. my business management education i did um, a special research base exactly on that and i discovered that for example here in america is forbidden you cannot see zero advertisement to any country kind of alcohol, any kind of uh, cigarettes, anything like this, it's forbidden. You can, in Bulgaria, you can drive and see banners tell you Slim Karelia and see this beautiful lady smoking or everything is completely charming with the smoking, it's fascinating, like it's feminine. It's also like a symbol of feminism to smoke. And, and this has become like one of this desired woman role to be a woman that is dressed in particular when she will have a cigarette and then this specific type of drink. And also in the advertisement, you could see the ladies drinking the alcohol, smoking, all of this is it's like a little bit like a brainwash you and, and seduce you to go and, and try something like that. And that's why probably a lot of Europeans smoke when I go to Europe, I will smoke too. When I travel, I will smoke too, you know? <laughs> In Costa Rica, actually, it is very frowned upon and, and it's not seen good that a woman actually will smoke in public, needless to say, to drink in public. Uh, actually, it is uh, for Costa Ricans, it, it looks degrading in the cultural setting. Can so, I ask you a question here? Because yes, in, in my country, if you go to the villages and you see a woman to smoke, she's considered a prostitute, literally. It's like she, the whole worst thing they can do to her because if somebody see her smoke, oh, she's not a mother, she smoke. You know, it's like, in especially in a low register environment, as you said, culturally. But of course, when you go to the bigger city, this is one part of being a citizen and being of being in the step with the fashion, being modern in all these things that come with the city lives, of course. Uh, in Costa Rica specifically, the woman is not considered a prostitute, a woman who smokes, however, is not well seen uh, because of the uh, given that uh, that has to do with cultural setting, that the woman has like um, separate dignity, let's say. It is expected for men to smoke 
or to drink, you know. It's manly. Uh, yeah, it's manly thing. You know, being alcoholic is a man thing. But <laughs> I, if, if there's a woman that actually is alcoholic is not well seen, still there's this stigma that is not well seen. And of course, the government has uh, done many, many things, not this government, but many previous governments in regards to banning alcohol or a consumption of cigarettes and alcohol, on, specifically on women. So that uh, the Latino mentality, let's say Costa Rican mentality specifically, will hold up to this uh, integrity for women specifically to, to have them, uh, let's say, protected of all this uh, of, of, of those is vices we we call it vicious or it's vices. not yes it's like scenes so it's not feminine it's like not attractive no man will want you if they exact, smoke, exactly basically as, as, as a matter of fact in costa rica if a lady would smoke actually automatically is a no-brainer no dater you know and uh, uh breaking not, deal it's a breaking deal and actually will not be considered even for a date in costa rica OK, so uh, it's like a, this type of stigma that uh, uh, Costa Ricans have. A, no, I think it's smoking is bad. Forgive me, guys, for smiling. It's, I think smoking is bad. I'm not promoting smoking. I just think how funny is that, uh, that we have such a, such a difference in the culture, you know? Yes. And then we have, um, and the same thing with alcohol for ladies, correct? That's correct. Actually, what about not... champagne or wine? Is that considered bad? No, actually, wine or champagne is actually considered from high society or a, or a highest social status. Although it's the same alcohol, however, is not that uh, accessible. Let's say to to mainstream social Pobretas. class. Uh, so the thing is that exactly so people Pobretas will drink vodka uh, okay in costa rica <laughs> they call uh, rum or ron or oh, whatever. Rome. i know rum in my country yeah. rum is a high society because it's expensive you know in costa rica is the opposite <laughs> in costa rica is the opposite uh for example wine has been a standard a, a standard middle class uh, beverage even higher class beverage of course champagne as well but it but costa ricans are not very much used to that because they associate champagne only with movies and very Romance. very uh, extremely formal setting very very informal okay all right let's go to our question number five uh about uh, presenting yourself with empty hands is it okay to show up in a friend's house with empty hands or party or just visit someone without bringing any gift and uh, if you go in a business meeting in trade fairs uh, i noticed that in high society is kind of um, normal a lot of businessmen does bring me gifts which includes chocolates mm -hmm. i just remember here a guy from st petersburg um, very nice guy he bring me chocolates and i eat them all uh and so what what about this kind of a business gifts is that something considered and how or not in in informal settings as well is not is not obligatory in, in costa rican culture is not obligatory by any means to bring any kind of gift however it is look it looks desirable and it it looks classy you know, and uh, in friend thing, settings or in business, in, in both of them, actually, because if I, for example, if if a person meets another one for the first time in Costa Rica, it is expected to bring a specific gift, let's say flowers uh, or chocolates. The thing with the flowers is uh, in Costa Rica, for example, lilies are considered for funerals. So uh, uh, men should not bring any lilies at all, you know? Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we call it calas, you know, uh, the white, the white, yes, uh, yeah, I know the white lilies. One. So wow. it's actually just for funerals, not never for, you know, for a- uh, I uh, imagine all the center. Latinos love roses because of the movies. Uh, they like roses, they, they like dahlias, they like specific, you know, uh, orchidias, orchids. Orchids, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they're very popular flowers. Uh, orchids actually are very, because Rick has a very good set of orchid um, um, cultivation uh, fields for this. And uh, in, in case for, for formal settings, uh, the, it is expected to bring a very small gift, a uh, corporate gift, just for uh, as a matter of courtesy. However, it's not required 
and people will not be frowned upon that. Um, in regards to informal settings, uh, as I told you before, for the first time, um, it is expected to bring something small like chocolates or a, some roses, dessert. but yes, yeah, so or dessert, but uh, it's not mandatory depending on the family you're gonna meet or the person you're gonna meet. That's actually up to the person. If they wish some gift, it is desirable to be given the gift as a matter of courtesy, but it's not mandatory. What and if a male visit a female? Is it normal to show up with nothing? Because for me, this is absolutely unacceptable. I'm not gonna see a guy seven time if he show up, he doesn't bring nothing and he just think that his beauty is enough. Like, I don't think this is okay. In the first time, actually, for men in Costa Rica, it's expected to bring something to the lady. It doesn't matter if it's something small, but a very careful detail, you know, because it's, show, it's showing a sign of respect and courtesy. Some women, however, they don't expect that. Uh, they expect them to pay for the dinner, actually, or, or even or to pay them more for, for something else. Uh, <laughs> dinner, but, dessert, aperitivo, and drinks after it. Yes. So they, they charge the man afterwards with that. <laughs> oh, okay. but, but as a matter of fact, um, it is considered very polite to, to and very courteous, actually very manly, to bring a small gift that doesn't necessarily have something to be big, but a, a very detailed gift for the lady. And it's actually a good sign of uh, manliness for mm -hmm. Costa Ricans. Like well, well manners, it's expressed well manners, correct? What about yes. in, in a dating life? I'm just curious when the guys uh, meet ladies or in their, is it normal the guys, because you know, you see a lot of these movies where the guys will give you these expensive bags or perfumes, like in my country, uh, especially in the lower register, in the small villages, a perfume is like very aristocratic gift. And some people will find this very cheap Turkish waters, <laughs> I will call them like this. <laughs> this and, and they will bring you this, these perfumes that, first of all, smell very terribly strong and you spray them and they don't last at all. Yes, and, yes. and 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 but some of this uh, I'm talking about this environment, the lower registers, uh, perfume is like, wow, it's something. It's a big uh, it's it's like aristocratic gift or something. Is there some kind of aristocratic gifts uh, between couples or when somebody will go and tell no, their friends, it, oh, yeah, no, he gave it, me a perfume or something? No, in regards to dating, there's no such a rule in my country. Uh, uh, not even it's in not lower... a rule. It's it's more like uh, let's say one of these things that you want to tell others and like kind of a show off. Oh yeah, he bring me a perfume for my birthday. And even if it's like you know what I mean. Yes, in this case for lower register, what they do uh, is actually uh, they um, bring a good car. And you know, take the woman, you know, and go driving to very uh, <laughs> with a nice the loud place. music inside it, of the yes, car. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So that's considered like a like a high show aristocratic others. show show of high aristocratic things, you know. And people invest. And some people in low register they invest a lot of money in cards, you know, uh, and modifying sure. their cars and things like this. To put the uh, music high and all to that. To put the music high, to drive faster, to have such, uh, uh, let's say, um, such Me tires. Mercedes that... or something. What is the car? In my country, this is the same with BMW and Mercedes. And even the gypsies will buy these cars and they will put this special music called Chalga. Uh, if oh. you guys Bulgarian and watch me, there is this type of like little bit like in Latino culture. Uh, what is this dance called? Um, reggaeton. <laughs> no, it's exactly like reggaeton where you shake your breast yeah. and your butt basically. And they're going to put this chalga music, which is always going to sing about love or heartbreaking or something. Yes. And this, uh, this going to play very loud. And that's that's like a big thing, you know. Yes, in Costa Rica is similar, but the, the music, of course, has to do with uh, a lot of, let's say, a low register status. So the louder <laughs> the, the louder the music, the better, you know. And uh, one of the things is that many guys actually are actually buying uh, very expensive motorcycles. So the big thing for, for guys, the low register is to take out the lady, it doesn't matter if it's raining or not, 
to uh, this huge motorcycle and driver. Like Harley Davidson yeah. or Suzuki? What kind? No, of... no, they 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 do with modern Yamaha. You know, oh, okay. very very modern Japanese motorcycles, and they show off like vroom, going uh, and then, uh, on the highways and you know boasting about the music and, and the helmets and so forth. <laughs> I understand. This is very funny. Okay, let's talk about shaking hands a little bit. How is that considered? Is considered normal to shake a lady's hands in some culture? I will tell about Muslim culture. Uh, women are considered seen. Let's talk about extreme Muslim cultures, where when you shake woman in Muslim culture, I know. Uh, not only when you shake, when you're intimate with your partner, you gotta wash hundred times because it's considered that women are diabolical and they bring the singing to men. So in Muslim, especially in specific countries, it's absolute uh, bad thing to shake hands. You, not, you do not shake hands with ladies. Also in high or some Ukrainian society, some part of a Russian snob society, uh, of course, some part of Asia, where they have dictators, they do not shake hands. I have one time this experience where I give my hand and nobody shake it. And I was in shock. I was like, how rude is that? And then I understand that this was a cultural thing. Um, and so if you want to share a little bit about that. In, in Latin American culture, Costa Ricans are very touchy. So uh, as all Latinos are. And, Do you uh, guys kiss like Italians? Because in Italy, when a beautiful businessman kisses you in the cheeks, you feel so great. In no, in Costa Rica, it's just one kiss. We don't we don't do two or three kisses. It's just one, and that's that's the customary uh, thing for for Costa Rica. And if you're going to have a, a serious meeting with a lady, you shake hands on the, on first place. However, is uh, some ladies tell you or some guys tell the lady if they are married they um, refuse to shake hands, but not because of, of this uh, uh, view of that women is sinner, but they say, uh, this the touch is for my wife. So they actually express that and women feel very flattered in Costa Rica when a guy uh, is very clear and, and tells them, you know, I, I'm not shaking hands because this is for my wife. Not all men do this, but some, some men do. And some women feel very flattered, others do not. They just feel, you know, uh, normal. But the common norm is that in Costa Rica, uh, the uh, the person meets another with a kiss or uh, not with American hawk because we don't have that. Uh, and uh, is for us is something strange Thanks, to have yeah. a hawk. Uh, to have a hug without a kiss, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a very, a very dry or very, you know, icy temperament, you know, but uh, for us being touchy. Or half in, you half know, out, you don't understand. Yes. There's a custom as well. It's a very standard custom that with all ladies, uh, for example, uh, a man never, never, uh, and if they meet them for the same, for the first time, sorry, they never, uh, shake hands or never kiss them on the first time when you when you have old ladies for example people from 60 years up mm -hmm. uh, see, and senior citizens uh, it's a rule in costa rica you just say hello my name is such and such nice to meet you unless they approach you and they want to kiss you you do it however if not better not to do this it's a sign of respect for elderly people Mm -hmm. This also in interpreting setting, uh, I, I guess this apply, correct? That's correct. Exactly. Even though in some culture I notice, like you just give me a flashback uh, for a lady that I interpret for, I, I don't normally shake hands with the Russian people because of this, because some of them doesn't like, but I do introduce myself and also because now it's a COVID, uh, I introduce myself with nodding down close to them, saying nice to meet you, but I do not shake hands. But if I interpret for somebody for five hours, uh, when I wish them good evening, some of them give me a hug, give me a blessing yes. and, and wish me all the best and all these kind of things. But I do never go myself to do this. Uh, not because not because we're in America. Also in America, we have more strict rules about this, that you cannot touch the person that you interpret for and whatsoever. Uh, and also as a, a fact of a cultural differences and courtesy, because they normally do this once the appointment is over. 
So once the appointment is over and I'm walking the lady to her transportation and she said, thank you and give me a hug. Literally, I don't break the law because the law, it says during the medical encounter uh, and, and clearly as it's not me, I'm just being kind and polite without encouraging uh, any kind of a friendly interaction. Uh, yes. Yes. We talk a little bit about the taboo talks earlier, talking about money, but is there any kind of a taboo discussions in your country like work, money, intimate relationships or relations, violence, divorce, for example, in my country? I was the only child with divorced parents, and that was a big, big like thing, you know, big taboo very strange uh, even people are very abused in small environments in my country they do not divorce uh, for example husband that drink and beat their wives everybody know that this is yes. happening and yeah. this is kind of normal and um, it's kind of taboo to oppose to that kind of abuse in a lot of these settings is there anything similar in your country Costa Rica has set a tradition, unfortunately, of uh, domestic violence uh, on both sides. For women, at the beginning, on the from the 1940s, actually it began. Actually, it began that uh, was a very uh, chauvinistic culture, very machista, and um, men hit women. You know, like a sport, preferably because of the, of the villages and the, on the farms, many people were farmers at that time. And the life was very rough and very simple. So the actual sport, let's say, I don't, and I'm not saying this as a matter of joke, is actually was an activity that was mentally considered a sport because of the repetition was to beat women and that women to have a lot of children. That happened many, many decades ago that was finished, uh, let's say in the 60s or 70s. The problem right now is that the law in my country switched from one extreme to the other. So there was this law that women were not taking into account for anything uh, and, and in terms of domestic violence, but the law switched completely like a pendulum to the other extreme, that actually women are so empowered that Unfortunately, right now, uh, any accusation that they would um, in, uh, put upon a man, if it's even unfounded, the man goes to jail just because he's a man. So in Costa Rica, is this ambivalent uh, pendulum of... Um, I uh, see of the same thing about sexual assaults in Russian culture, because a lot of these people that have money were able to escape uh, legal persecution there is a lot of situation where they make innocent people go to jail for abuse. Uh, I'm talking about sexual abuse that never happened or it was not this person's fault. Um, is that the same thing that you talk about? That is, is, is it something that is exists but nobody talk about? Or is it something like right now, everybody's aware but everybody is playing along with it no actually in costa rica people are starting to talk about that and actually there's a legal action against that because uh, the ministry of of women let's say in costa rica has empowered women very very much to the point to subjugate men so actually there are some women lawyers that actually go for men and this idea that of fake empowerment in regards to the law or abuse has not only been uh, thrown out upon men only. Women also are responsible because in my country, uh, the constitution says that, that we are all equal under the law. Doesn't matter if it's a male or female. But the problem is that of course, uh, politics and uh, the taboo things have made this um, this happening swing, you know, like on extremes. The other, uh, the other thing that has happened as well is that some women, I don't not say all of them, use, uh, as a matter of fact, the violence thing to, uh, to, to vent their anger on all men. And of course, it's very sad. Many, many Nicaraguan, for example, many Nicaraguan immigrants come to Costa Rica and they have a very violent culture towards women. 
they still have, have very decades, they are very decades behind us. And the problem is that the news, Costa Rican news, put the statistics and they don't show that the, the massive amount of realistic violence comes from Nicaraguans, not, not as much from Costa Ricans. It's a blended phenomenon between Im, uh, illegal immigration, uh, domestic abuse, traditional chauvinistic culture, and um, extreme women empowerment. So it's all blended together in, in this spectrum that, that we're having right now, these issues. So, and, and do you think this affect also the way the business works or? No, actually in Costa Rica, uh, the advantage that we have right now is that women have very, um, very good business positions. So they are not affected uh, with violence in such a way right now because of the status. Okay. The problem, the Can I problem... ask you a question yeah, about sure. the medical interpreting? So talking about uh, battering or beating their partners, I find that a lot of um, Latinas, if I call it, are ashamed to admit that their partner beat them or they would rather lie and pretend that never happened. Do you see that as well? In I've some seen, cases. I, they only talk when they go to coma and they go to these social centers where they bring them their kids and they legally, like when the legal system in America separate them, do you do you? Do you feel like there is some kind of a shame to admit the domestic violence or, or culturally inappropriate? It's like you're betraying your man if you talk about it. How How is that experience in Latino culture? In, in Costa Rican and Latin American culture, well, I, at least I can talk about Costa Rican culture. Uh, that happened many years ago, actually. And uh, some women were afraid to denounce their domestic partner because of uh, emotional dependency, economic dependency. And this is why many women decided a uh, few decades ago to uh, study and to become professionals so that they won't depend economically on an abusive uh, person. The problem right now is that when they have an emotional dependency, it's uh, psychological. It seems, it's psychological, it seems that it's even more difficult than the economical one. Because, uh, it, because actually uh, the culture is in, uh, it's increasing the, the view that since the woman has to be the one that should be protected, uh, women think that still they feel vulnerable, although they have a very strong economical position, they have a very strong status, and they are very um, proficient academically. So the problem is that still they have this... Um, Let's say stigma. Paradigma. Uh, exactly. And and they should somehow, for some strange reason, they feel um, emotionally dependent on many aggre aggressors. So different um, type of abuse, not only physical, could be emotional, psychological, be em emotional, manipulation, all exactly. of it. Yeah. Mostly verbal, exactly. Oh, and verbal as well. So verbal is not a problem. You don't have like a harassing or how it's called stalking in America. You don't have a law for stalking there. In Costa Rica, actually, uh, is the opposite. Costa Rica has like mobbing harassment, but the mobbing harassment is d done in a very solid way, like uh, sexual insinuations, but oh. with verbal with verbal abuse. So uh, companies are very getting very very tough to uh, to people that actually promote or uh, indulge in this type of behavior in regards to sexual harassment. You know, it's, it's actually very, very tough. I ask you because, for example, part of the verbal abuse, if I'm talking lower register in my countries, uh, I, I will give you example. I was interpreting for a lady um, that was from very low register. They, they don't even know how to write. So yeah. imagine like the register is so low and in this culture, the abuse is something normal. Yes. So they were sleeping in the car when the gentleman punched her in the face. And so basically what happened, they were in vacation with their car driving for Bulgaria to London. <laughs> And so they sleep in the car and she wake up before him and she decided to pinch him, to wake him up. 
and he just punched wow. her in the face and the police saw that so they arrest the guy because this yes. is considered abuse yes and so i had to interpret for this lady and for in her head that was not abuse she she was not able to understand that and also um while i was interpreting some relatives called this person and they they threaten her life they tell her some names and tell her that they're gonna kill her uh, if she doesn't make the things right but the matter of the fact is they're not even understanding that it's not her responsibility but actually the police saw him hit her and even if she's tried to deny it that was not working she would cry and be like i i want you to leave him free we love each other he he loves me and he watched me like a golden egg they will have this expression how much they're loved because the guy will feed them and clearly their education doesn't allow them to do more than just kids, you know? Yes. But for and, them, uh, threatening of their life is not considering abuse because this is something normal that they hear when somebody in the family want them to do a certain thing. In Costa Rica, if, for example, if, if, uh, if you see a man hitting a woman on the street, immediately all, all men will, will kick him or immediately because this is this is not well seen under any circumstance doesn't matter if it's the so domestic. most of the domestic is hiding when it's the family actually, look perfect and he beats her at home hiding yes, from everyone yes actually yeah there are many aggressors that actually mask their aggressiveness uh with a great uh, status great public with a figure. great status exactly and usually people on a very, very, very high position, especially politicians. They yeah. actually uh, were famous for many uh, domestic or even sexual violence uh, towards their partners. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And the last uh, question of this cultural awareness video is about, is there any kind of a behavior that is considered cool and dominant? For example, some of these... Uh, UK meetings where you move the cup of tea, like taking the space on a table of your opponent or some kind of a gesture, like let's say when you shake hands to put it on the top and just show that you're the boss or on the top of the others or wearing specific thing in a lower register, for example, Nike and Adidas in a very poor villages. Uh, you're going to see people wearing this Nike and Adidas pants uh -huh. with the white strips and a white socks, uh, something like this. Do you have any kind of... Um... In Yes, in um, low register, uh, they, we have actually um, a term called chata. Chata is like uh, this person that wants to imitate reggaeton singers. So they dress like rappers, Jamaican rappers, and what they like to show off our... Uh, necklaces and big, uh, actually big uh, caps that look like bricks, you know, and the tags and uh, a basketball, basketball uh, sh shirts with tags and, you know, like very, Americanizing, of like, like, a, like, like Americanized, yes, like Americanized rapper, you know, Nikes and all these uh, brands. And they wish to show off, you know, with the tags of their brand, you know, even though they could have i i just noticed a gentleman in a bus uh it was very close to mexico where i went last week I, and he had the shoes and he had the tag on the shoes yes, and yes. one part of me wanted to take a picture of it and one part of me was afraid to offend him so i did <laughs> not but i was i was not sure what what is that about clearly the train was coming from mexico so i didn't understand is that considering cool or what is that no in costa rica is not cool at all it's just a very very low register that is considered let's say chic you know to have these brands or to show them off but it's not cool at all and as i as, as i told you before the in, in the setting the formal setting uh actually the more sober the person dresses the better actually so I just noticed something uh, talking about a man in power or people that have a real power. Uh, I noticed that the people that are really rich, really successful and really powerful are very simple and, and they're very um, easy to communicate with. 
uh, they are like a real aristocrats. It's, they are very reachable. They can talk to you, the interpreter in one manner, and then when they see that somebody is a lower register, they can drop the register yes. to that person. Yes. Uh, and instead of that, there is another type of gentleman or a man in power that have a little bit of power and they're um, not so educated, let's call it. They don't have a formal education, but they have probably big connections or something. And they will be extremely, I would say aggressive and abusive and rude. They will, for example, really powerful men when I was interpreting in business, they would always uh, have a great respect toward my job. Uh, even if the meeting goes longer, then they would make sure I get break. They would bring me something to drink or to eat. Um, they will have this formal New York elevator talk with me and make sure everything is good with me. Uh, and the other type of the powerful men that are doesn't come from education, they will have this extremely difficult um, time to to deal with, they will be rude, interrupt you, order you, did you do this properly? Did you interpret correctly? They will be extremely unpleasant and difficult to, to deal with. Do you see uh, these two different types of a powerful, I don't wanna even say only men's because there are probably some ladies as well. Mm -hmm. In Costa Rica, uh, the uh, what I have seen is that depend on the educational level, but not education as a, as a formal education of uh, a degree. Actually, the, the mannerism, the mannerism, and the education that comes from the parents. So it is very well seen a person that is very educated are considerate towards others. So in Costa Rica, uh, the the level of education is not measured by the degree, but is measured by the way you treat somebody else. So we call that buenas costumbres, good manners. So a person that has good manners is very well seen as a very successful individual, regardless of the economic status or um, uh, social status. So the Actually, people tend to help this person to succeed even that, more correctly. That, that, that's correct. That's correct. Still, Costa Rica has, uh, has um, preserved this culture from our forefathers. And I will ask you one last question that is not included in this script, but I was just wondering, uh, in this process uh, for me looking for a Spanish interpreter, uh, I did communicate with uh, different peoples, a few ladies and few gentlemen. And I noticed that, unfortunately, not only, I would say I noticed this from the gentleman side, and I'm not sure why is that maybe some cultural something and I was wondering if you can clarify for me in my culture uh, when you're uh, um, interacting in a business way with someone you're not trying to be familiar with them unless the people are very low register and they call you sister or or you or they, they yes. bring you down but yes. let's say I, I am interpreting in Bulgaria or in Eastern Europe or something in Italy or in Barcelona whatsoever uh, I would never try to get familiar with my bosses or or text them or chat with them even though if I have their number unless it's business related unless it's emergency I am not gonna send them good morning text and and before I start this project with you I was talking with this person who seemed very educated and I noticed I noticed this thing is still continuing this gentleman sends a lot of texts a lot uh, he sends texts for good morning good night how are you i'm doing here i'm flying there i'm doing this hello my friend then also this person is married but i feel like he bombards me with this text also the other interpreter that i interview over over texting overload me while i was away i, I requested him not to and and i have this difficulty uh, to understand is that something normal is that something that i have to train um how how would you commend that actually uh, no actually in costa rica uh the unless it's a very formal business setting uh, we actually divide between what is personal life and business life actually it is not mixed all together depending on the on the length of years the person has been um working for a company there's some familiarity with the bosses, but not at the point 
to be considered like um, friendship or partnership, right? So uh, in, in business settings, it's very, very unlikely, um, not very probable actually, that people will text the boss every day. And actually, um, as a matter of fact, Costa Rica is a very legalistic country, has many, many laws. And there's actually one law that prohibits bosses to text their employees out of their, uh, when they are off time, when they are not working. No, this is the same thing here in America. In fact, uh, for me, it's also respecting of the time of the interpreter that I'm gonna hire in my own time. I don't see myself as a boss. I don't think I'm your boss or anything like that. I see myself as a person who collaborates with you and I want you, I mean, like kind of, I'm expecting you to respect my time. And I'm also expecting you to respect your own time because in a matter of the fact, these people that text me so much, uh, it, this is some kind of a weight on me because I'm working, I'm doing other things. And for me, it's a little bit culturally unacceptable to take or to want my time, especially knowing that I'm going to pay you to do something for me. And I'm kind of expecting these people to not over communicate, to make it kind of easy for me and just be present when the job is there when they will be paid because it's also their time. And why over text me when I'm not paying you for that? Is that, a, is that something for Mexican people or how do you think? I, I actually, uh, Latin American culture, uh, in general speaking, they don't, they um, actually the culture doesn't have like a definite boundary between those areas. Costa Rica, for the, the part that I know, it's actually having this separation. Between. Psychologically, they, they can understand the difference. They can understand the difference. Yes, actually, we can understand pretty much the difference. When is when work is work, when when personal time is personal time. And if you are among your peers, let's say your colleagues, that's a different story. Because since you, ha you are on your equal, mm -hmm. you can actually share experiences and behave like, let's say, like a host family. Yes. So, but not regarding bosses themselves or, or higher positions. That's, or that's, when somebody pay you to provide certain services, for example. Exactly. That's correct. So this happens basically in the lower register of Latino cultures that have no business culture experience. Yes, for example, uh, there's a term that many, um, many people who sell actually uh, in lower registers uh, apply, for example, to women when they go to a store. Uh -huh. let's, say, let's say a woman wants to go to a store to buy something and there's this man standing on the door to say, pase mi reina, pase mi reina, come my queen, come my queen. So mi, mi reina is like a very uh, sweet term but of course it's too familiar. Yes. And so, some women react, you know, like, uh, no, don't call me Mirena. I'm not your Reina, you know. I, I'm so uh, this particular things has been dissolving in um, working culture as well. You never say a boss or a female boss Mirena. Of course not. <laughs> Many people. But you can see that in the lower just This is this yes. is now makes sense to to feel familiar. Because like when they get you to a boat, you feel like boat is already yours in a way that I was commenting yeah. something yeah. about uh, in one of my videos. That was a very interesting conversation. I hope you guys enjoy our videos uh, for a cultural awareness. I hope this video make you understand a little bit more Costa Rican culture and maybe Bulgarian Eastern European culture. And um, in American culture, because we discuss and also different Latino cultures. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for liking and sharing and subscribing. And thank you, Jose. Uh, thank it you. was a pleasure to make this video. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.